Now, I don't want this to be a cliche when I tell you say amen. I want you to mean it. Amen. If it's just a cliche, then don't, don't bother. Because God knows you did. God bless you. It's good to see you. Good to see those of you who are visiting with us. Appreciate you coming in. Always good to see those faithful members who consistently fight the good fight of faith. You should receive your reward in just time. But it's just good to be in the house of God, isn't it? Just good to be here. Just think about this now. Yesterday, yesterday and last night, God felt seen the need to station an angel around our bed, keep our heart in rhythm. You thought you did that yourself? The Lord, he'd stay somebody there, keep the blood running warm in your veins. You know, because some of us, when we go to sleep, we're we, we unconscious. We could not keep anything going. In fact, somebody could come in and rob the whole house. We wouldn't know. But because God is good to us, and he realizes that we cannot do this for ourselves, he sends an angel to stand by your bedside at night. Keep the blood running warm in your veins. Keep your heart in rhythm. You know, because the way you go to sleep, your heart will get out of rhythm. But God keeps your heart in rhythm. And then when it's time, he just touches you in the morning with a finger of love. Starts you on another day. A day you never seen before. And when you get, when, when the Lord allows you to put your feet on the floor, you ought to thank him. You ought to thank him. You ought to say, Lord, thank you for another day. Day which I have not seen before. God bless you. It's good to see you this morning and I know, brethren, I know today is the uh, Super Bowl Sunday. Don't worry about it. it. It's not the Damascus Bears or the Jerusalem Mudcats that's playing. <laughs> and since we're not cheering either one of them, ain't that big a deal? Ain't that big a deal? Also, uh, let me, and, 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 and I'm, I'm just going to do this right now. Uh, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to make an announcement. We got any actors in here? Uh, everybody's hand should have went in there. <laughs> All of us should have been swinging. Uh, this month is what we consider Black History Month. And uh, on the third Sunday, in our third Sunday fellowship, we need some folk in here that are actors to put on a 10 minute skit. Now you don't have to be five years old. You can be a, it, in fact, we want from the youngest to the oldest. So that'd be Robert Mann's little daughter to Smith. <laughs> that, 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 that'd be like the newborn So if you want to portray, you can portray uh, a role playing or, or a character. You can be uh, Barack Obama. You can be anyone you want. It's just a 10-minute skit. And then they want us all to wear our dashiki. Now, all of us got dashiki way back in the corner, closet somewhere. We've been waiting on a time like this to wear it. The moth about done ate it up, but we've been waiting on a day to wear our dark hickey. And, 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 and even you, brethren, back in the day, you, brethren, used to wear them koofies. Look, look everybody looking crazy. What's the koofy? I still got two of them, a black one and a white one. I, they for rent this, this week if you want to rent them. Not for sale, for rent. But they want us to use those as well. And so that, that would be a good time for us to do it on the third Sunday. Uh, just make that a big day of that. Uh, look forward to being there. Uh, uh, since my wife and I, they sent us to notice they want us to be uh, in the uh, dress contest for this Darshiki thing. I don't think, I own them. I don't own them. I could probably just get a shirt and put some paint on. 
be straight. God bless. Now, if I hadn't taken all my time, I want to ask you to go back. Appreciate Brother Stark for reading our scripture. And I'm going to tell you before I start. I, I, uh, I prefaced this a couple of weeks ago and didn't get to do what I needed to do. And after going back, and particularly, particularly now, since we are studying on Wednesdays about, what are we studying on Wednesdays? All, all you folk that come don't know? Relationships. Uh, they are important. And uh, since we, I, I have prefaced this, uh, prefixed, we're, we're not going to finish this today, not unless y'all want to. Uh, we can do whatever you want. But I think this is an important lesson. And uh, you got a few minutes, and the brother left me plenty of time. Lord, have mercy. Bless him. I love it. Uh, and we're going to try to do this to help us. Everything that we do is try to help us, but some help more than others. And uh, some lessons uh, are more practical than others. But let's read this again, and then I'll, I'll give you some stuff that you need to highlight, and I'll come back, and we will do our best to put this out. In, fir in fact, in verse 1 of chapter 14 of the book St. John, Verse 1. I know a lot of guys don't study like this, but I challenge them anyway. They don't even preach like this. He says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in me. You believe in God, believe also in me, rather. Now, you probably hear that read a lot of, at funerals, and it's okay. But that ain't what Jesus talked about, no funeral. You, you probably, it's okay that they read that. And I'll tell you in a few minutes, he says, in my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. And here's, 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 here's your first highlight. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. You get that? He didn't say, I'm going to refresh the room I already have. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. My place is unique. Your place is unique. I'm not going to refresh. You know, when you go to a motel, they just clean the room. You get the same room. But he didn't say that. He said, I'm going to prepare. So you need to highlight that. He said, and if I go, listen at that vocabulary, English, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. You got that? Thomas said, I like old Thomas. God, I like Thomas. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father but by me. Here we go. Highlight verse 7. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. From henceforth you know not him, I uh, know not him and have seen him. Philip couldn't help but get involved in 
you know, how people stand around. You you having a conversation with somebody and somebody you ain't even talking to got to stick their two cents in. Amen, Brother Smith. Not, not, not this one. So Philip says unto him, so Philip's standing around listening. He said, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. Jesus said unto Philip, see now, that's where you got to do some people, you know, this, you already engaged in a conversation. Here comes somebody with no knowledge of anything, they're going to try to sideswipe you. So Philip throw his two sin in because he's on the side. Lord, show us the way. We, we don't know where we're going. Jesus said unto him in verse 9, Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen the Father, and how said thou then, show us the Father. He said, Believest thou not that I'm in the Father, the Father in me, the word that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Philip had to be put in his place. But I want you to elevate this text, and now I'm not going to finish this today, but I'm going to preach on the subject. If you don't know me by now, Now, I know some of you folk under the age of 40, y'all don't remember Harold Melvin singing. And you know what he said? He said, we all got our own funny ways. Amen, lights. But, but, but I want to take you to, on a ride. But, but, but to get this together, you, you know, there has to be a solid foundation. He said, if you don't know me, and I'm using the text, if you don't know me by now. Here, here is something that I want you to contemplate. Knowing someone and being acquainted with someone is two different things. What, what, what's happening in the text is, first of all, Jesus comes out of hiding. He's been hiding. And so when he comes from hiding, he's been hiding from his enemies, he tells his disciples about all of these things that are going to befall them. Three times he tells them. Three times he tells them that, that he's going to be betrayed, that he's going to be crucified. And he keeps telling them three times, and they don't remember none of them. Sound familiar? On this particular evening, Jesus goes to them in John 13, 21, and says, uh, and not only am I going to be betrayed and crucified, but one of my best friends, is going to betray me, that brother Judas. He's, so Jesus said, I'm not leaving because Judas is going to betray me. I'm leaving because that's the Father's will, that I go to my Father. Peter speaks up. You know, Peter, there's a lot of Peters in here. He said, Lord, I'm not like them. Take me with you. They're they, they going to mistreat you, but I'm not. Take me with you. Jesus said, you can't go. He said, I'll come back and get you. He said, Peter said, why can't I go? He said, because you're not ready. You know what, Peter? When the pressure comes, you're going to deny me three times. Peter said, me? You know some of us? Me? me? And all Jesus is trying to let them know that you might be acquainted with me, but you don't know me. There are a lot of people in the church that are acquainted. Coming to church don't get you to know Jesus. 
not in itself. Now, you know what acquaintance is? Acquaintance is you might know somebody's name. And you see them in a the crowd, you know their face, but you don't know them. Amen. How many of y'all in here know Obama? You know who he is? You know Obama? He was your, he was the president. 44. Y'all don't know him? You know his name. And I bet you could pitch him out of, pick him out in a picture. But you don't know him. You don't know him. And disciples write in this text or like that. They are acquainted with Jesus. But Jesus himself said, you don't know me. You've been with me all this time. But you don't know me. And there are folk in the church just like that. They've been with Jesus over the years. We've come in and sat down and hallelujahed and clapped and pat our feet. And, but that don't make us know Jesus. There are all kinds of folk that come in, but that don't. Part of that not knowing Jesus, though, is not knowing who you are. Now, give me a chance to develop this a little bit. To talk. I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this relationship path, if you don't mind. And then I'll, I'll like I said, I'm not going to do this. But part of not knowing Jesus is us not knowing ourselves. Because many times we are deceptive to ourselves. Amen. Hallelujah. We keep secrets. From it, nobody know about our secret. Some of us got life in the daytime and some at nighttime. Then come on, get this microphone, holler, amen. And so, because you don't know yourself, folk don't, don't really know you. Because you don't know who you are yourself, God doesn't know you. And because these disciples didn't know their own strengths and their own weaknesses, they didn't know themselves, so they couldn't relate to what Christ was saying. That's why the text says, if you don't know me by now, you're not going to know me. We want folk to think we all are that, a bag of chips. Amen. We, 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 we're not honest with our own self. Amen. We'll go buy five mirrors, get, get one to make it. I'll show us the image we want. That's but we got to be honest with ourselves, and you can't be honest with God unless you're honest with yourself. And so in the text, Jesus is finding out. He's having a heart-to-heart -heart talk with his disciples, and he's finding out stuff they, that he didn't even know about them. And they're finding out stuff they didn't know about him. And every once in a while, in this life, we are challenged to reveal who we are so that we can understand who God is. And that's why Jesus said, you don't know. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And he said, none of y'all can get to God if you don't go through me. We got folk today that are going to go to God, going to go around Jesus. That ain't going to work. Philip said, Lord, show us, suffice us. And there are people just like Philip in the church. Now, let, let me say this. These are, this is not a bad thing, Philip or, or, or Thomas in this text. These are not bad. I'm so glad that these men are honest enough to tell Jesus, I don't, we don't know you. Lord, we've been here all this time. They've been with him three years. And, and, and we don't really know you. You know, because most folks come into church, they, that first mentality they have is, I thought, 
Not about what you think. Remember in Isaiah chapter 55? What did Isaiah say? Our thoughts are not his thoughts. Neither our ways, his way. For as high as the heaven is above the earth, so are his thoughts, our thoughts, and his ways, our way. So we don't, it's not what, about what we think, it's about what we know. And knowing is a whole lot. In the church, we should want to grow and develop. Some of us want God to get extravagant with us. Let me tell you something. God can get extravagant. We want him to get extravagant with us because then if you, God, if you get extravagant with me, I will believe. Let me tell you something. Extravagance has already been shown. I know it to me. I've been around here, and I can look over my shoulder, and I'm like, David, I've been young, and now I'm old, and I've yet seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. I know God can be extravagant. So I already see that. But perhaps Jesus was thinking this. I've done a lot of stuff in three years in front of these guys. And they don't even know. Jesus, I could just hear Jesus say, Peter, don't you remember I walked on that water? How, how you asking me, who am I? Don't you remember I turned water into wine? Tell me who else can do this, Peter. Don't you remember when we were in the boat that the storm started raging and I spoke and said, peace, be still. And you don't remember that? So, see, that's why some of us are, that, that we've been in situations, we've been in our lives, circumstances, where God has stepped in and helped us, and we, we don't remember anymore. Because the first thing we start thinking, what you done for me lately? How many times, perhaps Jesus speaking, how many times do I need to deliver you before you believe that I'm him? How many times I need to help you to heal your body before you believe? How many times I got to rescue you from your enemy before you believe? How many times I got to open a door that's been shut in your face before you believe? How, how many times I got to make a way where there's no way before you believe? You don't know me. No, Harold Melvin in this song say, I got my funny moves and you got yours. But you know what he said? Just trust in me. As I trust in you, have mercy. He said, as long as we've been together, that should be so easy to be done. That's what Jesus is saying today. As long as we've been together, if you trust in me, and it should be so easy. You done seen everything about me. But you don't know me. You don't know me. And so as we go through, as we go through life, as we deal with one of those things, is it's insecurities. We have insecurities in our close friends, but we have insecurity in God. We want to trust him as far as we can see. We don't want to go anywhere beyond that. And, and the reason for that is when, when we talk about being close, trusting, that's an intimate relationship. Now, I know in, in the uh, English vernacular, most folks say intimacy is or sex. No, it's not about sex. It's not about sex. Intimacy is closeness. Intimacy develops security. When you're intimate, you trust in a relationship. When we are in a relationship with one, and it's intimate, not, 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 it doesn't have to be sexual, but I trust you in our relationship. You trust me in our relationship. Jesus wanted these disciples to trust him. When I tell you I'm going away, I'm coming again. That's why I can tell you guys, let not your heart be 
troubled. In other words, don't get upset about everything that's going on around you. Trust in me. But you can't do it. You can't do it. Being an acquaintance. Say, acquaintance, you know my faith. You even know my name. Hey, bro, come up. You know, hey, I love you. You don't love me. You don't even know me. And we treat God the same way. When we get when we get in a, 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 a environment such as oh oh I love the Lord but oh, let me wet your whistle right quick and I'm, I'm gonna be through. Got your Bible? Philippians chapter three. Philippians chapter three. Good gracious, I, I'm gonna deal on that. I get on that relationship. That's important. But don't, let, 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 you know, that's a lot of preachers. They like to jump around, hop around, talk, talk, talk. I like Bible. You like Bible? Because even when you get mad at me, you can go back and read the Bible. And guess what? It's still there. It don't change. But, Cameron, you ready to read a little bit? Let's have some. Let's. So this, this is something we're going to say. This is fun. We're going to learn Jesus. Watch what Paul writes. Philippians chapter 3. Well, when I get that book, I ain't got my stuff. Uh, and I want to start at verse number 7. Now, we, 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 we're going to ride the break a little bit through this because I want you to learn something. I don't want you to just feel good. I want you to learn something because you're going to need it. <laughs> okay. Read, Brother Cam. But what things were gained to me, those I count lost for Christ. Stop, 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 stop. Like I said, we got to pump the brake in here. Paul said, Those things that were gained to me, yes, sir. I counted them lost for Christ. For Christ. I see you looking at me. So what, what, what does that mean, Brickhouse? That means, well, there are some things that are that we have gained on a standard level in life, you know. How many of y'all how many y'all would just just love me and be impressed with me if I tell you I had three doctor's degrees? Ooh, that's a smart man. Ooh, Jesus, he's smart. You you can't you can't you can't gain anything from my my knowledge. And Paul had a dual citizenship. Paul had money. Paul had all of these things. But Paul said, those things that I gained uh, were gained to me. He said they were lost for Christ. In other words, I put more emphasis on materialistic than I did on the spiritual. And that's the reason Jesus said, you don't know. Some folk in the, in the church, we don't even want to trust God unless we get a, a big old, we want a, a pot with a pot belly uh, roast in it. Amen. In other words, we want something materialistic. Yes. Yes. We get a new car, the first thing we put on it, the, the Lord is my co pilot. <laughs> and it's okay. But that's not what God is about. Paul said, those things I gain, I count for loss. Read, Brother Campbell. Ye he said, doubtless, yea, doubtless, and I, I count, count all, all things, things but, loss but for the Jesus, of the but loss of Jesus for the excellency of the knowledge. In other words, those things that hinder you from learning about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Notice what Paul said. He said, I count them as loss. But if you're going to grow up and be what God wants, he said, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, you've got to know Jesus. Yes. You've got to know him. He said, for, for whom, whom I have suffered the loss of the all loss. things and do count them but And I'm telling you, when you decide to turn to God, you're going to lose some friends, mm -hmm. so-called friends. They're not going to come and hang around your house no more when you tell them, look here, child, I've been baptized now and I'm learning the Lord. I, I ain't got time for that Jesus. 
Guys on the block ain't going to treat you the same way. They come to that camp and you think he's God. Family members going to treat you the same way. Paul said, I, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, do count for dung that I might win Christ. And watch this. And be not found He's, in him. He said, and be found in him. Not having my, not own, having my own righteousness. Which is of the law. Which is of the law. But that which but, is through the faith But that of which Christ, is through the faith of Christ, the, the righteousness, righteousness. Which is of which God, is God, God faith. faith. In other words, you know, because some folks think God ought to come down on our level. Lord, look at me, Lord. You are you ought to be accepted. You don't have to accept you on your level. David realized that David said, if he does made us and not we ourselves. None of us in here could keep our heart beating. Yeah, I killed a couple. I got high blood pressure mess. That ain't gonna be nothing but blow your heart up. God keeps it rhythm, in rhythm. But Camel, Lord, you drop down. Time is running. Man, you know when you start having fun. Time. Let's go to thirteen, right quick. Brethren, I count not myself to watch, apprehend. Watch Paul's writing. Now y'all got the Bible, verse thirteen. Paul, watch what Paul say. He said, "Brethren, I count not myself who have apprehended, but this." One thing, thing I, I do. do. Paul said, Forgetting I have not things. yet arrived. I'm not all of that. I haven't arrived yet. But Paul said, this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. And that's and why we can't know. That's why, that's why we don't know Jesus. But we want to hold on. Amen. 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 Paul said, this one thing I have for him. You got folk right now don't speak to each other. Family members don't speak to each other. I ain't going over that church on break coffee over there. And he, 20 years ago, he told me I was fat. Well, you're still fat. <laughs> don't make no difference. Amen. Paul said, this one thing I do. I forget those things that are behind me. Some of us don't forget nothing. We remember everything. Because I remember 1962, second Sunday of the month, you didn't speak to me. Come on. It's time to move by that. That's stunting your growth. That's why you don't know Jesus. You are being stunted by foolishness. He said, that's one thing I do. I just forget that behind me. What can you change? Leave that alone. We got folk now walking around playing church pony. Don't I, don't I remember? Don't I, don't I remember? What the what? Oh, say, I forget those things behind. And I reach forth. You know what reaching forth is? Reach forth. It's time for you to get out of the hole and reach forth. If you want to know Jesus, reach forth. Can't reach back. He said, and I reach forth unto those things which are before. I love this next passage. He said, I and press I press. You know what pressing is? Press is work. Press is effort. You're not going to know Jesus coming in here, sitting down on the pew. Uh, and I know that's, that's a part of it, but coming in, putting your two cents in the basket, drinking this juice, and eating your cracker, that don't make you know Jesus. What makes you know Jesus is when you decide, Lord, here I am. I'm going to make an unconditional surrender to you. You remember, you remember Isaiah? When Isaiah said, Lord, here am I, send me. He didn't work, you know, because some, some, some some folks get caught up on too many other folks. Well, what about so and so? Don't worry about so. What about you? He said, Lord, here am I. He didn't say, uh, go, send Jeremiah. No, he said, send me. You don't have anybody go for you, Lord? Send me. I won't worry about whether Jeremiah go or not. Let Jeremiah take care of Jeremiah. 
But Lord, here I am. Send me. Some folks are worried about what's up. Well, is someone going to help me? Don't worry where they're going to help you. What you going to do? You can't, you can't take care of nobody but you. You know what? You, your grown children, you can't even take care of them. They running around leading you by the nose. And you shipwrecking and crashing and burning up and putting your house on auction to get them. You can't take care of them. I know you love them. But there is such a thing called tough love. And the next time you go see him, Junior, when he's there, hey, my mama coming down there, she's going to bring me a fruit cake with a fowl in it. If you don't know me by now, Junior. <laughs> he said, press toward that mark for the prize. There is a prize. That prize involved is having a relationship with Christ. Having a relationship. He said, for the high calling. Move up. Now, you, that doesn't mean move physically. It means move spiritually. You want to know him? And you don't have to go through no whole uh, sign-in process. Just make yourself available. And here's the key. Let us, therefore. He said, let us, let us, therefore. As many as be perfect. As many as be perfect. Be thus minded. Be thus minded. And if in anything he be otherwise minded. If anything you be otherwise minded. God shall reveal even this unto you. See that? God's going to do his part. And you know what? All of us in here would be disappointed if God ever stopped doing his part. Wouldn't you? What if God forgot to wake you up this morning? But we can so easily forget our obligation that we made with the Lord. Yes, sir. Amen. We do. But, but boy, we would be, you'd be dead if God forgot his obligation. What if God forgot to come down 38, 33, Cardinal Oak Circle this morning and wake those folks up? I wouldn't be here because I live on Cardinal Oak. But if he forgot to come down your street, I need to go down this road and wake up these folks. Shoot, I, I can do that later. Peter, get me another hot cup of coffee. And you and Jesus, come over and let's talk. <laughs> and I know that sounds facetious, but see, if when you got a relationship, you don't forget you. I have an obligation. We are, as God's children, sons of God, we have an obligation. When you're obligated, well, some of us, when you're obligated, you don't easily forget. You go buy a new car, and folks say payment every seventh other month, Mr. Coffee. You obligated to pay it. You don't forget. You don't forget. You may not even be able to pay it, but you don't forget. <laughs> payment says seventh of every month. Because you know that if you don't make it, they're going to start harassing you. And, and God, God knows you ain't going to miss two. When you miss two, that's when you start parking in the garage. <laughs> parking in somebody else's house. You and your wife go out, honey, we, we, I forgot we got parking three doors down because they still looking for it. You're obligated. And church, I know that's facetious, but in the church, when you know Jesus, we are obligated. Amen. He says, nevertheless, unto who has already obtained. Let us walk by the. You got a Bible? What's that say? Walk same. by what? The same rule. Walk by what? The same rule. All of us have to walk by this. We expect the preacher to walk the same way, but we, we, we want to do our own thing. Amen. Be honest. We had a party and we had one tonight. Everybody, everybody in here, and I'm not saying they're gonna have a cup. <laughs> ain't gonna be nothing in it. We may be drinking fruit punch, but they ain't gonna ask you what's in yours. But let the preacher have one. 
Did you see what breakup had in that cup? Same thing you had. But it starts in our heart. Listen to this. I'm, I'm coming back. In Matthew chapter 22, this is another one that we have studied. In Matthew chapter 22, and the verse is number 37. Jesus said unto him. Jesus said unto him. Hold on a minute, Brother Campbell. I'm just going to say this. I, ain't, I, don't even, I don't mean nothing by it. But Matthew is not after Genesis. I don't mean nothing by it. That means Matthew is in the New Testament. And what did he say, Brother Campbell? Jesus said unto him. Jesus said unto him. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Look, 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 at this, look at this language. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with some of your heart. All thy heart. I'm not going to ask you to show no hands. I'm not going to ask you to raise enough. And then he said, and with all but that ain't, that's, not, that's not the essence of knowing me. He said, and with all thy soul, with all your soul, you got to love me. Oh, wait a minute, Lord. Now you, you just said you wanted heart. I want soul too. Mm -hmm. Read. And with all thy mind. I want everything that compose you as a body and a human. I want you to love me. With that. I want you to love me with all your heart. Your soul, that in with me, and your mind. Somebody said, well, I thought you were talking about heart. Amen. There are two parts. Yes, sir. The Bible uses the text heart. It, it uses two separate parts. He said, with the heart, this, he said, with the heart, man, believe. What do you believe at? Right here. here or here? He said, with the heart, man, believe on the righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto God. So, that, that this is the heart, and this is the mind. You know what's the mind? This is the process center. Amen. I know some, some, some of our process center, we might put a sign on our forehead, going out of business. <laughs> Amen. Don't process nothing no more. You know what process means? Think about it. Think, think about it. There's some things you need to think about. And one of those things that are most important is, is when Jesus said, Thou shalt love me with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. You know what you need to do? You need to consider that. And I don't mean you need, you need to just stop for a minute. Oh, man, I spent five minutes thinking about this. No, no, no. I mean, be like David. Go in your closet. Sit around a while. Ponder that thought. Think within yourself. What is it that I need to get close to so I know him? I want to know him. Do you? 310, right quick, brother. Matthew 310. No, 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 no. 310, uh, uh, Philippians 310. Have I got your computer, Brother Cam? No, sir. You all right. Come on, Brother Cam. Come on. I had to plug on it for a minute. I'll send Brother Gerald Smith over there for you. Philippians 3 and 10. Yes, that, sir. That I may know him. Wait, 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 wait. What, 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 what. Paul said that I may know. Yes, sir. And the power now, now of here, his resurrection. Here, here, isn't that a confusing statement? Any of you Bible scholars, that's, a, that's confusing. You know why? Because Paul is an apostle. God had already called Paul. He was a chosen vessel. And now Paul said, well, that I need to know him. Watch what Paul said. 
and, and I'll develop this next week. Paul say, that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. I know the power. That, that one thing Paul said, we need the church. That's why folk don't know him. We don't know the power. Of, and I'm going to develop this next week. Can't do it today. Not unless you want me to. If you want me to, we'll, we'll be ready for kickoff if I do. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't get no amen. <laughs> Paul said, that I may know him and the power of you don't need to look at TV to get excited. That man, how many of us really want to know the power of the resurrection? Ooh, Jesus, man! When you have that, you feel like you 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 like Michael Jackson. Uh, Jordan said, "I believe I can fly." Yes. He said, "Not only the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his, son. but I want to understand the fellowship of his suffering." Mm. How many of you go through suffering? Some of us suffer with things we don't even know why we suffer. Paul said, I need to understand the resurrection, the power of his resurrection. Is there power in it for me? Yes, it is. That's the secret to living. Then he said, when you can appreciate the dynamics of suffering, his suffering, one other thing. What did he say? And, and being conformable unto his death. And understand the dynamics of being conformable to his death. What did his death do? When you learn that, you know Jesus. You don't have a, you don't, you ain't not walking around with a platonic relationship then. You're walking around with an intimate relationship. You're not just acquainted then. You know him. And so I'm wondering. My time is up. I'm trying to be tight. So I'm wondering this morning, in honesty and sincerity, how many of us want to know Jesus? How many, how many want to know? Let, let me do this. Uh, stand up. Stand up. You ready to stand up anyway? Aren't you? Some will say, wait five minutes, I ain't got my nap out. Stand up and somebody help Brother Smith up. He's falling all over the chair. But let's take, let's be honest. You don't have to be honest with coffee. You don't have to be honest with me. I can't do, I, I'm struggling to save me. But how many of you really want to know Jesus? C come up here. Come up here. Don't be ashamed. Come up here. How many really want to know Jesus? Come on, come, walk up here. Walk up. It's okay. Nobody's going to bother you. I mean, you, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know what's in your life. You know what you got to fix. You know what you got to give to God. You, you know that so that you can know Jesus. I want to have a relationship with him. Now, let me tell you something. When you have decided to have a relationship with Jesus and you make an unconditional surrender. In other words, you say, Lord, here I am. You're, you're like David. You're like David. You're like Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, you're the, you're, I'm the, I'm the, you're the potter and I'm the clay. In other words, mold me and shape me like you want. I want to have a relationship with you. I want to be close to you. Lord, I, I, I've got some things going on in my life. I know I have. And nobody can fix them but you. So I want to tell you, when Jesus was upon this earth, when Jesus walked upon this earth, those Jews thought he was a liar. He was a wine dripper. They made all kinds of excuses to get away from him. And even when those soldiers came and took him in captivity, Jesus, the Bible said, could have called legions of angels 
He could have called and got rid of all of his enemies. But you know what? He stayed there, Brother Campbell, for a wretch like me. For somebody like me who I, I don't even, I didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't deserve it. Some folks say, well, you don't know because I deserve it today. You're not worthy. But he stayed there. And, and, and so what he did is established through his death a way for all of us to be saved. Did you know that? That system is called the church. I know a lot of folks say, well, I want, I want, I want to just, I just want to praise him and glorify him in the church. The scripture don't tell us to praise him and glorify him in the church. They tell us to praise him and glorify him and it'll come through the church. So if you hear this, morning, I want you to consider where you are. Consider your mind. Remember the scripture we just read from Philippians chapter 3. That none of us in here are perfect. We all have shortcomings. I know there's somebody in the bunch that say, I ain't got no shortcomings. Yeah, yours is lying. We all got it. But what we want to do is let Jesus fix it. Is that okay? Sing with me. Let Jesus fix it for you. Uh, he knows just what to do. Oh, whenever you pray, I'll let him have it way. And he will be Listen, if you're here, you're not a member of the body of Christ. You can do as these young people have done over the last couple of weeks. Six of them have responded just to hear. And you know what? I know, I know man, I know man teaches. I teach a Bible. I'm not afraid of anybody. I don't care how many DDs and CCs and PPs he got behind his name. I know the Bible. If you're not in the body of Christ, and I'm not making anybody angry, I'm just telling you the truth. Don't you want to, do I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? You can't be saved. Because listen to this scripture, 2 Timothy 2.10, Paul says, Therefore I do all things for the elect's sake, that they might be saved. The salvation is in Christ. If you want to be saved this morning, you can be saved. Hear God's word, believe it, repent of your sins, confess Jesus, and be buried in baptism. That puts you, baptism puts you in Christ. You're on your way then to knowing. You can do that this morning. If that's your decision, we're going to ask you first. You first. If that's your decision, you take a seat on these front seats. If that's your decision, any of you in the audience, if that's your decision, sit here. If you're here this morning and you just need to fix things, you need to get things right, you want to repent, you want to say, Lord, I, I, I've sinned. I don't really know you. I want to get better at you. And you need to make a confession, you take a seat on the front. If you're here and you're in the body, these witnesses, all of us have witnessed this morning that you're making a commitment, you're making a renewal. And not only just us, but God Almighty is. And I told you last week, when humans, that's us, we should not say something just to be saved. Jesus said, let your yea be yea. And your no be no. Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes 5, every word you utter will lead you so if you're up here this morning, you want to do better, we see you now in the witness room. And as we begin the verse of this next song, those that don't, don't need to be added, those that don't need to make a confession, all of you can do that. Thank you.
me not forsake. Amen.